Hello everyone, my name is Eduardo. I'm a solutions architect with Amazon Web Services. Today I have here with me Sanjay from IBM. Hello Sanjay. Hello Eduardo. Hello, my name is Sanjay Doiforde. I'm a principal solutions architect with IBM. So Sanjay, we have a lot of customers that uh, talk to us about, uh, you know, when they're migrating their workloads to AWS or they're building new workloads on AWS. And we talk a lot about, you know, the benefits of adopting AWS, one of them being elasticity that you can, you know, scale in and out dynamically and allocate the right amount of resources for your applications. But customers are looking at ways to optimize their costs as well, right? And mm -hmm. even though they have this scalability and this flexibility with AWS, um, they, they, they want to see how else they can even further optimize their costs, right? So they often ask us about application resource management solutions that can help them, can help them achieve that. So where can IBM help the customers on AWS uh, execute those activities? Sure. So IBM has a product called Turbonomic. It's an AI-powered application resource management system. It's a containerized application uh, system that can be run on any uh, VM. Uh, it can be run on uh, Amazon EKS or uh, uh, Rosa, okay. Red Hat on OpenShift. And it can uh, also run on Amazon EC2, right? Yes, okay. uh, exactly. Uh, so it basically monitors your resources in a hybrid cloud environment, could be on uh, uh, on-prem or AWS, okay. and it will try to achieve the desired state. So you okay. first set your targets, and then it will try to match those targets. Okay. So it tries to balance, as you were initially saying, tries to manage, uh, ma uh, balance cost with performance, okay. right? Uh, so it, uh, it does that in real time, uh, okay. It provides you a lot of uh, suggestions, cost savings, uh, optimization, um, and there are other use cases that we can talk about. Okay, now when we see uh, uh, users here from, from your on-prem environment as accessing the application, right, and integrations with applications running on-prem to Turbonomic on AWS, you know, we need to have some kind of security layer there, right? To con access control and authorization control. Right, right. So, so it uh, Turbonomic uh, integrates with Amazon Cognito okay. for uh, authorization and authentication. Mm -hmm. It relies on uh, uh, AWS CloudFormation for automation uh, scripts okay. uh, to, you know, adjust resources. And it uses S3 where the customer's uh, current usage report Okay. Uh, the you know the billing utilization yeah, report, cost yeah. and usage reports from AWS are right. kept on S3, so it accesses that. It too. accesses those. Okay. Now, when we look at Turbonomic on AWS and you know optimizing resources, you know what are some of the AWS services that Turbonomic can monitor and help customers optimize? Yeah, so it can uh, monitor, for example, your compute like EC2 or EKS. Okay. Uh, how they're performing. It can monitor your database usage, like Amazon RDS mm -hmm. uh, or your EBS, right? Yes. So it can monitor all these resources as well as, uh, for example, we have IBM Red Hat OpenShift service. Okay. So Rosa service, it can also uh, monitor uh, Amazon EKS. Okay, so if so, Turbonomic is uh, gathering metrics via CloudWatch, but then, as you said, it can also collect these metrics directly from from the Amazon uh, services, from the EC2 instances, or EKS, or Rosa, right? That's, that's correct. That's now, correct. when we talk about this resource uh, uh, optimization and the data that it collects, like what, can, what kind of uh, optimization can it do for things like uh, uh, databases, what kind of metrics does it look yeah. at? So, uh, so one of them is obviously for the database optimization. But on the, say, for example, on EC2, right? So uh, customers have, say, Bob Bart, uh, pool of reserved instances, RI okay. instances. It can monitor the EC2 usage and figure out that in this, in a particular use case, uh, using an RI instance would be more, um, uh, you know, optimized, right? Okay. More uh, cost benefit uh, to the customer. So it can, it can uh, do those kind of recommendations Okay, so it basically helps customer better allocate the, the let's say, the amount of uh, reserved instances that they have. You know, instead of using on-demand EC2 instances, it helps them decide where to use 
reserved instances to lower costs. Exactly. Okay. Right. And then I, I believe that also based on this matrix, it will also, on top of that, help you decide the actual instance size or the Amazon RDS database instance size, right? That's correct. So it can determine, you know, what type, what family instance, uh, instance family that uh, uh, needs to be utilized for a particular workload. So it can do all that because it's powered by AI, mm -hmm. and so it can look at trends, yes. uh, what has happened historically, uh, and it can predict also. Okay, and now imagining that now we have all this uh, this metrics and uh, we need to take action to execute this, and I think that's what you mentioned here, where Turbonomic can use cloud formation to trigger some of this automation, but I believe it can also use other types of automation to execute exactly. these actions. Yep, yep. Uh, so for example, it can use utilize uh, Ansible, okay. uh, IBM's Ansible, or it could use cloud formation templates or other third party tools uh, to uh, adjust resources. Uh, and then it can send uh, real time notifications to uh, your messaging app or okay. email. Okay. So you can integrate to things like Slack and notify SREs of actions that are being recommended or taken automatically. That's true. Okay. Right. And now, if we look at an end-to-end -end kind of uh, solution, right, I think it is, it's an interesting concept where we integrate the ARM solution with some kind of uh, application monitoring solution, like an observability tool, right? Right. And so I think Turbonomic also has that capability, right? Yeah, so Turbonomic can uh, integrate with IBM Instana, and IBM Instana is a full stack observability tool. Mm -hmm. So you can basically now combine observability to take actions using Turbonomic. Okay. So you can integrate your APN and ARM uh, to provide that end-to-end -end solution. So you're not just figuring out that certain things are about to fail, but now then you can use ARM to fix those. Oh, okay, yes. And ob obviously, I think one important thing is that you're driving, you want to drive your cost down, but you also want to prevent undersizing your instances so that it creates bottlenecks or things like that, right? Exactly. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Now, what do you see as some of the most common uh, use case patterns for, for Turbonomic? Yeah, so the, the first major use case is like, you know, as customers move to the cloud, uh, and depending on where they are in the journey, they want to make sure that they are uh, cost is optimized, right? Okay. So for cloud cost optimization, that's the first use case uh, where you have resources running, it can provide you those, like the recommendations I earlier mentioned. Uh, the second use case is for cloud migration. So it analyzes your resource usages and then it can uh, recommend how do you do the cloud migration? Uh, what would be the right sizing, for example? So it, it discovers your your let's say on-premises environment that create, creates a migration playbook for you. Right, exactly. Oh, okay. um, and the third use case is in sustainability. So as corporates try to uh, reduce their carbon footprint uh, and optimize the resources, uh, it can help you with that too. Right, because it's going to look at your consumption and it's going to make recommendations, take uh, automatic action to reduce your instances and right size your instances and right size the allocation of reserved instances so that you can reduce your carbon footprint. Right, right. yeah, and the reserved instances is just one example, yes. but there are several other things Turbonomic is capable of doing it. Okay. Uh, but overall, yes, it will try to balance all those. All right, so this has been a very interesting topic, Sanjay. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us today, and thank you all. Thank you, everybody.